Hey guys, thanks for joining me. This is Dusty with High Tech slash Diag Speed USA. I'm here to go over a couple more things. We have a new one for you. Um, today we're going to be going over the difference between an ISM and a DSM module for Mercedes. So what is the difference between an ISM and DSM and what does the acronyms actually mean? Okay, so Mercedes, when they first released this style system, um, it was a conversion from the old traditional mechanical shifter now to a stock uh, lever that you have on your steering column to shift it from park to reverse neutral drive. Um, they called this module the ISM, which means uh, Intelligent Shift Module. Um, so these things came out. It was pretty nice to have that feature. Everything was smoother. However, they did have some inherent problems. And because of those problems, they eventually went to a newer style. Looks the same on the exterior, um, but these are now called DSM modules. DSM stands for Direct Shift Module, or Shifter Module, if you want to say that. Um, so we'll, let's get a little closer here, and I'll, I'll show you exactly what's the difference between these, these two in the inside. So what are the main differences between these two? Right here, we still have our ISM uh, module and then DSM right next to it. I'm gonna move this over and get a better look of this. Um, if you look at it, we have a, just a couple basic internal components. This is the main drive motor, and then this is our backup motor that releases this wound up spring to then, in, in the event of emergency, at least be able to shift this into a park position, okay? So normally what happens, and that's quite often now, and this is why they upgraded it. If you look inside here, this motor actually is driven by a plastic gear set. Over time, as this thing is being used, uh, because it does put a lot of strain and stress on this, um, these gears themselves will shear off and then you basically will prevent it from uh, shifting into any other gear. Um, it, what's kind of, what, when this does happen, um, typically the car is stuck, cannot be shifted out of park unless this whole assembly is removed and you manually move the gear selector into a neutral position. This can be a pain in the butt if you're trying to get the car towed, um, especially if it's in underground parking or anything like that. It's uh, definitely, uh, it's not an easy thing to deal with to get it to a shop. And it, once at the shop still, it makes it hard for us to get in the bay, get underneath it, and things like that. So, Mercedes, because they saw so many of these things fail within warranty, decided this is a bad design, um, that they better change it and upgrade to something better that's more robust, that's not gonna have these same inherent issues. And this is where the DSM came in. So let's go ahead and move that over. And here is our DSM, okay? The looks, the basics of it looks kind of similar and um, the way it functions and things like that. Same motors, same functions for those. However, if you look where those plastic gears are, now they have like a little rubber belt in between them. Uh, it's almost like a little cogged belt, like a mini timing belt that would be on uh, uh, cars. However, this has prevents the whole face-to-face uh, -face gearing when those things would shear off. They have eliminated it by, by taking those gears out of place and replacing it with some flexible rubber that's a little more forgiving and stronger against uh, these kind of conditions. So when you do order a new one from the dealer, if you did have an ISM originally, they now will sell you a DSM module uh, as a replacement. Um, these, these are also made by Continental. Um, so that's, you, you, when you see the Continental sign, usually means it's a DSM and, and they will also have it markings on the outside on the part number, um, referring to this as a DSM module. So if you are gonna replace your module, it is recommended that you go and upgrade it to a newer style so that you don't have those same problems. Especially if you're gonna be going used, um, you're gonna put a used module in it, you much rather uh, put a used DSM module than a, a weaker, especially if it's used, on its way out ISM module, okay? So those are the two things. These do have some failures still. They're not inherent 
to the same exact style where this um, tooth area um, would go bad. However, as you can see on this one, our problems are different. Um, we do have issues with these things sealing. Um, normally they have a rubberized coating around the exterior that seals it from the inside to the outside as well as um, the seal between the outside of the transmission case to where it engages uh, the actual transmission. So um, they do have issues with water damage. Um, some of them still communicate, however, some of them don't. Um, and you're left with the same circumstances. You're stuck in park, cannot put it into neutral until you actually remove this housing from the transmission case and physically shift it into a neutral position um, to be able to push or move the car. So um, just some pointers or some things to look out for. Like I said, um, one other thing that we do have in these systems, these are just the inherent problems, but but these systems are a little bit more involved than just motors and a shifter. Um, this is the actual PCB board that's inside, and you can see that it has a pretty big microcontroller and some other little gizmos on here. Um, what these are used for is obviously the net part of the network to the car, right? And the ability for the car to control this. But this board also, and this module, right? is also incorporated into the immobilizer system of the car. So if you were going to replace it with say a used one from another car, there is data on these microcontrollers that is specific to whatever car it came off of. And it's usually locked data that cannot be reprogrammed say by the dealer. Once it's been locked one time, they were designed to be one time use. However, we do have a solution for those. Um, if you do have a used one, we are able to unlock the immobilizer system and then reteach it in to your car. Um, it's more than just a VIN number. There's actually some, some protected hash in there, um, but we do have a solution. Uh, so if you do insert this um, an, uh, a module onto the car and you have a scenario where it does not want to shift, but it does communicate and things like that, and you have maybe DOS start authorization errors, that is because the data on this original board or the, the donor module you installed does not currently match the data that's in the car. So there's multiple modules throughout the car that have to match for successful uh, immobilizer system to release and for so you can drive the car. This is just one of many that Mercedes has. So. Well, that about wraps up uh, this video. So if you guys have any questions about the services we provide for the cloning, um, or you, um, if you wanted to, to purchase a new one, that's also another service we do uh, offer. Um, we do full bench programming, coding, and things like this. And like I said uh, before previously, these do have immobilizer data on them, so we do have the ability to swap that um, if we're gonna be using a used one in another car. So. Once again, my name's Dusty, Diag Speed USA slash high tech. If you have any questions, let us know, but we'll see you on the next one.